Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be counting down the top five legendary assault rifles that you can ever wish to obtain in Borderlands 3. These weapons sit atop the AR pedestal, and if you're looking for one to enhance your build, there's a lot of great ones here. I'll be telling you what they do, who is dedicated to dropping them, and how you can get them hitting as hard as they can. Dead Pistols last week had a request for SMGs next, but if you have an idea for what weapon class you'd like to see next week, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like, and let's crack into it. We begin at number 5 with the Contained Blast, a TORG assault rifle that can come in all of the elements, including non-elemental. It's found only in DLC 3, and like most of these, it can drop from the world, but it also has an increased chance to drop from Abadokus, who you fight around in this area of Ashfall Peaks. The Contained Blast is your classic TORG pelter, it's like the Purple Stranger, but turned to the max firing a large number of projectiles per shot, of which one of them will explode on impact, and the rest will stick and await their detonation. The projectiles don't follow a particular pattern and instead are quite spread like that of a shotgun, and that's how you should treat it. It's best up close where you can land all the projectiles, and when you do, it'll rip through your target. The brunt of its force is done when the sticky projectiles explode, and if the contact explosives weren't enough to end them, then what's coming next definitely will. It typically comes with the double penetrating prefix, consuming 2 ammo per shot, but you can even bypass that and fire double the projectiles at the cost of 3 ammo per shot. That's what I'm using here, and it's great. If you're looking for the one with the highest DPS, this is it, but any contained blast has the potential to deal massive chunks of damage. Moving on now to number 4, the Clairvoyance, which is exclusive to DLC 2 and can only be obtained by defeating Critchy, who you fight right about here in Curse Haven. The Clairvoyance is a Jacob's weapon that always comes in cryo. It's typically semi-automatic, but it does come in a fully automatic version through the Gatlin prefix, which I'm using here, and you can even get a Masher variant as well, which makes it fire multiple pellets at once. The Clairvoyance combines the traits of various Jacobs and Torg weapons when you land a critical hit. Critical hits will cause stickies to be stuck to your target, which explode after a period of time, dealing high damage and ricocheting bullets to nearby enemies. If you land multiple criticals, the grenades will explode at once, giving your enemies brain freeze and taking a big chunk out of their health bar. Its fire rate is a little on the slow side, but its damage is enough to make up for that and it has a decent magazine size as well. There's something here for all Vault Hunters, high crit damage for Flak, Cryo all day for Zane, Elemental and Ricocheting Bullets for Amara, and of course Splash damage for Moe's. With it, there's a big incentive to hit crits, which is made even easier with the Galaxy Brain modifier, and when you do land them, the Clairvoyance comes into its own as a powerhouse Jacob's Assault Rifle. At number 3, it's the Soul Render, a dial assault rifle exclusive to DLC 2, which can only be dropped from either Tom or Zam. You fight here in Heart's Desire. The Soul Render is an extremely well rounded gun, dealing good damage at a high fire rate, and it also periodically fires purple skulls that'll home in on your target, dealing splash damage and raising its DPS even further. It can also come in all of the elements, which is a great trait to have, and means you can always find the perfect one for any situation. Because it is made by Dahl, it will come with two of three firing modes. Feels bad man if none of those are fully auto, as there's no question that's where it's at its best. There's a lot to love about it, you can shred through health bars just with its bullets, and send the skulls out to deal an extra hit. It's an all purpose assault rifle with extra flavour. The homing skulls not only help you to hit out of reach targets, but allow players to leverage its splash damage potential. 
With it, you'll smash your way through the crowd and look damn good doing it. At number 2 is the Monarch, one of the newer base game weapons introduced as part of Mayhem 2.0 and can only be dropped from Killer Vault. You fight right about here in Electra City. The Monarch is a brutal multiple pallet weapon that can come in any element including non-elemental and fires at a rapid pace. It typically has 4 pallets listed on the card but you can get a x8 variant that consumes 2 ammo per shot instead of 1. Like the dictator before it, its bullet pattern is quite wide but it can be tightened by aiming. It rips through anything and everyone, the amount of pallets it sends forth at the rate it does leaves little chance for your target to survive and it's perfect across the board for bossing and mobbing. You can even double down on its damage by pulling out the bipod at the cost of your mobility. With it your DPS will increase twofold and it's great in close to medium ranges. There's no heir to the throne with it in your hands, transforming you into an immortal being like the queen herself while you banish your enemies to the shadow realm. Before number 1 is uncovered, let's dive into some honourable mentions. First up, it's the Breath of the Dying, which has an increased chance to drop from Blinding Banshee in Desolation's Edge, located around in this area. It always comes in corrosive, but that's okay because you'll struggle to find a better corrosive gun in the entire game. With good damage, a high fire rate and a generally healthy magazine size, the Breath of the Dying flies the flag for guns that shoot acid. Its unique effect sends a number of corrosive orbs out from the enemy you killed, which can damage other enemies in the vicinity, making it good for crowd control. They deal splash damage at a decent radius and can also down you, so beware that happened to me quite a lot when I was getting this footage. It melts armor incredibly quickly and doesn't shy away from dealing high damage to other health bars. It's unusual to have a fully automatic gun with an effect aimed at controlling the crowd, but the Breath of the Dying has that, along with its already high DPS. It's reliable and a joy to use, I mean who doesn't like dousing their enemies with acid and causing them to explode in a radial burst of corrosive outpouring. My thoughts exactly. The next honourable mention I have for you is the Star Helix, which has an increased chance to drop from the Power Troopers you fight round about here in Atlas HQ. It can come in Radiation, Cryo, Shock or Non-Elemental, and I find Radiation to take the cake out of the available elements. It shoots 3 projectiles for the cost of 1 ammo and they are fired in a horizontal pattern and will shimmer as they fly through the air. Aiming down sights makes no difference and means that the Helix is best suited to close range combat although it will still perform well at medium ranges on large enough opponents. It comes in both fully automatic and 4 shot burst firing modes, with fully automatic being the better choice. It deals high damage at a good fire rate and is great for ammo consumption too. It's a great assault rifle that can blitz through large groups of opponents and is the original best base game assault rifle you could find. The damage it deals is unwavering and will be high on whoever you target as long as you get all the projectiles to land as they are the only thing you really need to watch for. Line it up though, squeeze the trigger and the Star Helix will far from disappoint you. Another assault rifle that should be mentioned honourably is the Rod, a fast firing bladder for assault rifle that can come in any element. It's exclusive to DLC 3 and has an increased chance to drop from Terra Domini, you fight around in this area of the Blast Plains. The rod is like a toned down shredder fire from the base game but hits a decent chunk harder, although it fires a little slower. Its magazine size is huge, sitting around 100 and allows you to send a barrage of bullets into your enemies rapidly. Its fire rate will also increase the longer you hold down the trigger. To add to that, it always comes with a triple grenade underbrow which deals great damage in itself and will regenerate over time. You want to be using it as much as you can because that's where the money is 
and it's always great to pull it out when you need to clear the scene. The last assault rifle that deserves a mention is the Stone Thrower, which has an increased chance to drop from Cormash. You fight around in this area of Ashfall Peaks. On the surface, it's your typical semi-automatic Jacob's weapon, but underneath, it's much more than that. Its raw power shines through when you take advantage of its advanced ricochet effect, which causes bullets to ricochet back and forth between crowds of enemies, taking big chunks out of everybody's health bars. It's best on Amara due to her ability to increase the amount of projectiles, but it remains a good gun on all Vault Hunters nonetheless. It's one of those weapons that deals more damage to the person you're not shooting at. Enemies will explode when you haven't even touched them. It's the closest you'll get to being a magician if you don't know any card tricks. Number 1 has arrived and its name is Shika Shika OPQ System which can only be obtained from the cartel event by defeating Josie Byte, Franco Firewall, or Joey Ultraviolet himself. Although currently unavailable if you're watching this around the time of upload, the OPQ system at level 60 would sit comfortably on the number one perch, and even now it's about par with the Monarch. The reason for that is its incredible damage coupled with its high fire rate. It doesn't have OP in its name for nothing, other than firing standard bullets, it will also frequently expend a shock round that deals splash damage equal to a third of the original bullet's damage. They're great for boosting its damage output and if you're using a transformer, those shock rounds will be plenty to refill your shields. It can tear through anything and although it will only ever deal non-elemental and shock damage, you'll never face an opponent that will resist or be immune to its onslaught and that's a big plus. Like many Atlas weapons, it has an alternate ability, but it's not for painting targets for tracker rounds. Instead, it spawns a copy of the gun that fires really slowly and deals less damage. It's nothing special since it was nerfed, but it will make you feel less lonely. It really is a great gun, shame it's locked behind the cartel event. But if you're looking for the best assault rifle to ever grace Borderlands 3, this is it. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the best assault rifles in Borderlands 3. If you did, consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.